be saved. That is when salvation will come. But he who does not believe. But the ones who deny this, who reject this message. Will be condemned. Condemnation will come upon them. And this sense will follow those who believe. But listen to this Bible. It says what? This sense. This science. This science. This science. This science. What shall this science do? This science will follow those the who believe. The science will follow. Those who believe. Not what we see today. Wherever we hear that there are signs, people are running there. The Bible said that the signs shall do what? will follow who will the signs follow will follow those who believe those who believe listen to this this signs will follow those who believe and the lord is making it clear that when you believe in his name what will you do in my name in my name they will cast out those who believe will do what Cast out. I don't hear the Bible saying pastors, apostles. I don't hear the Bible saying that only evangelists, no teachers of the weight, no prophets. The Bible talks about those who believe. They will cast out demons. demons. They will speak with new tongues. Because the power that is in you is of God. You are operating with the same spirit. What he said to them that carry in Jerusalem until you are endured with the power from on high. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. Remember Peter and them. A woman, a man, a man, a man came and said that this person could not even deliver my child. They could not do anything when Jesus was around. And he said that I give you power. And they shall cast out demons. They shall do what? Speak with new tongues. Speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly. Anything that is deadly that they will put into your drink. It will, be, it will by no means hurt them. It will by no means hurt them. They will These are the promises of God. To those who believe. But the question is why don't we see these things happening? Why don't we see these things happening? Check for me the book of Deuteronomy 320. Let's see what it says, please. Is it Deuteronomy? We don't see all these things happening in our lives. The question is why? Until the Lord has given rest to your brethren as to you, and they, they also possess the land which the Lord your God is giving them beyond the Jordan. Hmm. Then each of you may return to his possession which I have given you. Do you hear what the Bible says? It talks about possessions. God wants to give his people rest. But I still have a question. Why are we not entering his rest? Many believers are crying. Many believers are crying. And don't make a mistake and think that they are not praying. Today I want us to look at the reason why many of us are not being delivered. Or we hear about deliverance, but we suffer the same thing over and over and over again. You still remember the story of a man who has been struggling, who was in the tombs. The Bible declared that he will even break the chains that they would put around him. But when Jesus appeared, that was the end of his affliction. I want to believe you get that scripture in the, the book of Mark chapter number 5. Because in chapter number 4, that was when Jesus was in the boat. And then there was trouble in the sea. And they went and woke him up. The Bible declared that he was sleeping in the stern of the boat. And when Jesus arose, he stood up and said, Be still. And he turned to them and said, O ye of little faith, 
meaning that work on your faith work on your faith the question is that is the church of today building up faith or is our faith built on ministers what is the Bible saying say that again which, which, which scripture? Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, oh, verse number 1. So start by the day by verse number 1. Then they came to the other side of the sea, mm -hmm. to the country of the gatherings. Yes. And when he had come out of the boat, when he had come out of the boat, immediately they met him. Immediately they met him. Out of the tombs. Out of the tombs. A man with, a an, man unclean with, spirit, with an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit. Same thing that he told them. I am giving you power against unclean spirits. Now there comes an unclean spirit. The men coming out of the tombs. Staying there. Now that tombs has become a place of his abode. And what did Jesus do? Um, because he had often been bound with sacred shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken mm -hmm. in pieces neither could anyone take him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself crying the out the man was crying for help crying out the soul was crying for deliverance the spirit understood that until this body is delivered i will not be able to operate freely when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped But when him. Jesus appeared, when Jesus appeared, he ran and worshipped The man ran him. and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, And this is what he said. What have I to do with you? Listen Jesus? to this. Now what speaks is not the man. What speaks now is the spirit, unclean spirit. What have I to do with you, Jesus, mm -hmm. Son of the Most High God? Even Satan knows that he is the Son of the Most High. I implore you by I'm God. I'm begging you. That you do not torment me. For he said Even the evil spirits are afraid of torment. Mm. For he said to him, Come out of the man and clean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? He said that, what is your name? And what is the answer? We are legion. Mm. Mm -hmm. And if you read that scripture carefully, the man went to, uh, to Decapolis. Mm. Decapolis. If you read your history very carefully, you'll tell you that those are cities. Deca means ten. He went to ten cities in other words. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, telling them about Jesus who is able to save them. This man was delivered. About the woman with the issue of blood, the woman was delivered. About the woman who was for 18 years bent when Jesus came asking this question, is she also not the daughter of Abraham? And the woman was delivered. The question is that for how long will we be delivered? Suffer the same thing over and over again. What you run there? What? Come, do this. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will deliver you. If you only bring 100 rands to, 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 to the table as a sacrifice, the Lord will deliver you. You give. Tomorrow, when he's gone, the same thing you're still struggling with. Why? Saints, we have to come to a point where we understand that it is only the word of God that is able to deliver. All the noises, we're making people to run around, we are busy kicking, we're doing this and we, that is not deliverance. That's entertainment. We're busy tripping people when you are there. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, bring him up. That's a show. They might as well go to the theater and act there. That was not Jesus. Jesus did not entertain demons. He cast them out. 
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am asking that Lord God Almighty give us the word today that will bring understanding and knowledge in us. The word that will truly deliver us, Father God, from all evil. Spirit of the living God, speak to us this morning. Spirit of God, take charge. It is you who knows what your people need. We come, Father God, to them thinking that we know what they need. But it is only you who have the word for a season. This morning, speak to your people. I pray that you will use me as your mouthpiece, a channel of communication between you, Lord, and your people this morning. Spirit of God, take over. Let my mouth be mute. Let nobody hear me, but let everybody hear you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, rule and reign right now. Speak to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When Jesus was speaking to Peter, at the end, before his departure, what did he say to him? What did the Lord say to him? I'll give you a clue. It's in the book of John. Let's see if you are all listening. You didn't see what Dr. Kumalo was doing. What is the Bible saying? What, yes, what is the Bible saying? Okay. He said to him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Do you love me? More than this. More than this. He said to him. And he said to him, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Listen to this. He's saying that, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Mm. <laughs> Jesus is not saying that, no, Simon, you do not love me, or Simon, I'm not sure. He said, but the love that you claim to have for me can be proved. How do we prove that we love Jesus? He said to him, and he said to him, feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Why is it so important? The sincere milk of the word. The reason why we are having a community of Christians that is so weak is because we are feeding them junk. That is why they are always happy, but there's no joy in their lives. But there is no joy. He said that three times. Three times. What did he say again? Simon, son of John, uh -huh. do you love me? Do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He's even telling them that you know. When he said to him. And this is what the Lord said to him. Tend my sheep. Tend my sheep. Tend them. What did he say again? He said to him the uh -huh. third time. The third time now. Simon, son of John. Simon, son of John. Do you love me? Do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time. Because of this is what me? will happen to you. You will always be grieved. The Lord is telling, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. This is my focus. This is the mandate I gave you. This is the commission I gave you. I hear you are saying that you love me. I don't have a problem with that. But until you prove your love for me, then what you are saying is just words. He said that, do you love me? He said, yes, you know that I love you. And what did the Lord say again to him? The third time now. Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. Mm, you know you know all things. You know that I love you. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him. And the Lord said. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Give them the word. Allow them to grow by giving him the true word that is able to make them wise. Why do we need the word of God? Saints, until we come to a point whereby 
the church is being fed so much that it starts even to gain weight meaning that they are being robbed spiritually all the things that we see happen today that is why many of us cannot even test the spirits it does not matter the preaching that you hear because of the lack of understanding of the word of god you continue going to the same trap of the devil because of there's a scripture in the book of Hosea, is it 4 6 or 6 4 because you cannot have the knowledge of the word of god until the true word is being preached. Hosea. Chapter 4 verse 6. For chapter 4 verse number 6. My people are destroyed. The Bible life. says that my people are destroyed. destroyed. And what? why are they being destroyed? For lack of knowledge. For there is no knowledge. Uh -huh. Because you have rejected knowledge. Listen to what the Bible says. Because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject The Lord will also reject you. There is no excuse of saying that I've been going to this church. This is what they taught me. When the Lord will be sending some of his messengers to come and correct them. The doctrine that you have been fed with that is taking you straight to hell to bring you back to Jesus. No excuse. He said that I've been sending my prophets day and night. So that they can come and correct us. But we choose what we want to believe. And the prophet Jeremiah said in chapter number 5, verse number 31, that prophet prophesy lies and the priest rule by their own power. And my people love to have it so. Because you love money, you love fame, you love all these things of the world. You have been made to hate God. Paul was talking about another doctrine, another gospel, who bewitched you, foolish Galatians. Because there's another doctrine that is promising you so many things that some of us will die without tasting them. What is wrong with us? He says that they have rejected what? Knowledge. Knowledge. You have rejected one of the seven spirits. You still remember the book of Isaiah? What chapter is it? It talks about Jesus. Because of the prophets were telling us about Christ. The coming Messiah. Try Isaiah chapter number, I think it's 11. Start from verse number 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Uh -huh. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Wait a minute, number 1, the spirit of the Lord mm. shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. And understanding. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of counsel. And might. The spirit of might. The spirit of knowledge. The spirit of knowledge. And the fear of the Lord. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We deny you the knowledge so that we can be able to control you. We deny you the knowledge. So that you will be dependent on us as pastors or ministers of the word. We give you a glimpse. But Jesus gave them all. Peter gave them all. Even when Stephen was dying, he continued to give all. John gave them everything. Though he died at the end. His head was cut off. But he said that, see the Lamb of God who forgives the sins of the world. He never compromised the gospel. He died telling the truth. The man was angry because he rebuilt him. Never cared whether he was a king or not. He said, what you are doing is wrong. 
Today we compromise. What happened to the true gospel of Jesus Christ? When will we see the revivals? When will we see the revivals? Where, where men brought their knives and their weeds. You know that time when weed was not allowed to us illegal. I have seen them. The man of God was preaching. Evangelist Galo Hulela. He was preaching. That was way back then before we are having those houses at the end. What is the name of that place today, Mafura? They went to the Chinese, Sulufen, whatever school is. At the back, where your sister went to. That school. Mafura. Mafura. At the back of the, 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 the last place, Gita Wege. Uh -huh. When the, the tent was there, men brought forth their cigarettes. They brought forth their own copy. Seven stars and the five stars. Rambo knives, if you still remember it. And they were not searched, <laughs> but the Holy Ghost touched them. For the Bible makes us to understand them. That we have been convicted by the Spirit of God. The power that was in him, the power of God in that man, the power of God in the evangelism, was the reason why people come forth voluntarily to come and drop at the feet of the cross. What happened to such a gospel that was able to deliver people and set them free? What we used to see blind men, even when they take off their glasses, you can tell that this man was blind. They will tell that I was blind, but after the prayer, I received my sight. And for a testimony, their eyes, his eyes, <laughs> well, just like the time when he was blind, and guess what? He was still using those glasses. He was even able to read without glasses. Well, I saw not, not glasses, so the shades because of the power of God. What happened to that power today? My people, they have forsaken me. Read Jeremiah 2:13 again. My people have forsaken me. We have turned our back. Jeremiah chapter number 32, verse number 33. We have turned our back. Uh huh. 13, 2 13. For my people have committed two evils. Uh -huh. They have forsaken me. They have forsaken me. The fountain of living waters. Fountain of living waters. And healed themselves. Healed themselves. Systems. A system. Broken system. Broken system. Broken system. A bucket that is broken that cannot hold water. For we need the water. In your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Talking about the Holy Spirit that today we have neglected. Nobody wants to tell the truth. For we are afraid that our churches will be empty. Rather than an empty church, than a church full of people going to hell, not pleasing unto God. There's another one. Is it 17, 13 or 13, 17? My people, those who are called by my name, they have forsaken me. We need Jesus in our lives. We need to repent. Repentance is what must be preached today. Holiness and righteousness. 17 years. Oh Lord, the hope of Israel, mm -hmm. who uh, all who forsake you shall be all who forsake you what will happen to them shall be ashamed be careful that you don't bring shame upon your life by forsaking the true gospel of Jesus Christ and follow what is not the true gospel promising you the things of this world every time you come out of that church you are always happy but you will never ever Never, not even once, be ashamed of yourself and the life that you live. Because you have been told, come as you are. 
but you have never, you are never told to change. You can still live like the world, party like the world, and there is nothing wrong with that. Why? The Lord has accepted you the way you are. Uh huh. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth. Those who depart from me shall be written where? In the earth. In the earth. Because they have forsaken. Not in heaven. Lord. In the earth. Not in the book of life. In the earth. And what will cause them? I mean, their name to be written in the earth. Because they have forsaken because the Lord. They have forsaken the Lord. The fountain, of fountain of living waters. The fountain who is the king. We have forsaken him because of another gospel. Second Corinthians chapter number three, verse number sixteen. It is only when we turn to God. It is only when we turn to Jesus. When we make that turn, that will be the only time that the light will begin to shine in our lives. What is the Bible saying? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, when one turns to the one, Lord, my God, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The veil is taken away. The veil will only be taken away in Jesus Christ. When we repent from the bottom of our hearts and we forsake the things of this world and we start to look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we need to turn. It says that when one turns mm. to the Lord, and listen to what Jeremiah says in 32 33. When one turns to the Lord, there's a turn that is necessary in a Christian life that one has to make. Jeremiah 32, verse 33. And they have turned to me. They have, listen, listen carefully. They have turned to me. Yes, there's a turn, but be careful of your turn. There's a turn that you took, that you made, but be careful of your turn. There is the Bible say that they have what? They have turned. They have turned, yes. A turn was made. Mm. To me, the bed. But now the problem comes. They are telling to me their bed, meaning that they are not facing me. They have turned their back. And not the face. And not the face. Though I taught them. Though I taught them. Rising up early and I teaching got, them. I've been rising early teaching them. I gave them all that they need. Yet they have not listened to or receive instruction. <laughs> Yet they have not. Listen to receive instruction. Listen to receive instruction. That is the problem with the church. What is this instruction? What is this instruction? Romans 10 17. We need to turn to God. We need an instruction. We have to follow it. He gave his right in the wilderness. Commandments. That was his instruction. Thou shalt not is an instruction. He's telling them what they shall not do. You shall not bow before any other God. You are busy bowing before that tall statue called Mary. With that fat baby called Jesus. You are not listening to instructions. Thou shalt not bow before any other God. For I, the Lord, am a jealous God. Yes, give us that scripture. Romans 10, 17. Yes. So then faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. By the word of God. That's how it comes. What is the teaching of faith? When every time the preaching is about something else, not Jesus, who said that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. The church of Jesus Christ is experiencing a serious dilemma 
that nobody wants to deal with because he wants to remain relevant in the body of Christ. Nobody's rebuking sin anymore because the people will leave the church. I'm still holding on to what Apostle Malfike told me till today. He told me that story, I think it was around 2004. I'm still holding on till today. He said to me, I'd rather have a church of four people that I know that will make it to heaven than having thousands that are going to hell. I started to realize it is not about the number of people that you are having in the church. It's about the quality that you have in the church. You rather have a church that cannot afford anything but people will make it to heaven. He said that faith comes by hearing. They deny us the word of God. They deny us the word of God. And it is the word that delivers. It is the word that the Lord has exalted above all his names. He sent his word and do what? Please read Psalm 120 verse number 7. I want to show you how powerful this word of God that we are denying you is. Psalm 107 verse number 20. Mm -hmm. He sent his weight and healed them. He did what? He sent his weight. He word. sent his weight. And healed them. And healed them. And delivered them from their For destruction. the word that he sent delivered them from what? From their destruction. From their destruction. You need the word of God to be delivered. You need the word of Jehovah to be delivered. You need the word of God to be delivered. You need the word of God more than the word that will tell you that repent, change, amend your ways. You want to see things working out in your life, you need the word of God. The book of Matthew chapter 22, verse number 29. The book of Matthew chapter number 22, verse number 29. He answered and said, I will not, but after what? Wait a minute. I said Matthew 22, 29. Jesus answered and said to them. Jesus answered and said to them. You are mistaken. You are making a mistake. You are. E -R -R. Not knowing the scriptures. Not knowing the scriptures. Not the power of God. That is the mistake. That is the mistake of the church today. You are only being, or you're only happy when we come, we lay hands on you. You see people falling, that may, what makes you happy. We just keep on laying hands on you. You fall down, when you stand up, you are still the same, there's no change in your life. Because of it is the word of God that is able to change you. It is the word of God that is able to change you. Go to the book of 2 Timothy, please. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Verse number 15. That is what I want. And that from childhood. And that from childhood. Speaking to Timothy. Paul, the apostle. You have known the Holy Scriptures. You have do what? You have known the Holy Scriptures. You might well, Tim, by knowing the Holy Scriptures. Hmm. Why it is so important to know the Holy Scriptures? Which are able to make you Because wise. the Holy Scriptures are able to make you wise. For salvation. For salvation. Through faith, which is in Christ through Jesus. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus, not as us putting our faith in men. 
When this man touches me, my life will change. Yes, it will change because it will get worse. From worse to worse, it's a change. The Holy Scriptures that are what? Let us listen to the language of the Scripture. The Holy Scriptures that are the Holy Scriptures that are able, able to make you wise. Able, capable. The Scriptures have the capacity to make you wise. No wonder why we do not give you the Scriptures as we're supposed to. Because the moment you know the truth, you will even come to me and start to question some things that I preach. I love Paul. Paul did not even care whether to come and question him because of, he knew very well that he was preaching Christ crucified. He never complained about the people in Berea, Acts 17, 11. He never complained about them. He even talked about them because of Paul understood this is the right thing to do. They have to be wise. It's only scripture that can make you wise. Listen to what Paul was saying about the Bereans. These were more fair-minded. These were more fair-minded or noble mm -hmm. than those who are in Thessalonica. Mm -hmm. In that, they received the weight. They received the weight. With all the readiness. Their hearts were ready for the weight. And searched the scriptures. But though the word was preached, they went back and searched the scriptures. Daily <laughs> to find out whether these things were so. You know what we do today? We receive the word. And we go back and spend time with Facebook. We spend time with Instagram. We spend time with WhatsApp. You know all the status on that WhatsApp. But you don't even know your own status with God. That is what we have become. Look into families nowadays. You all can watch TV, but somebody's on the phone. He is in this place. But in another world, devil, the devil is not dumb as you think he is. The devil has got a plan. Do you know what the plan of the devil is? Go to John 10 10. That is the plan of the devil. We are supposed to be giving the people of God the word of God, we deny them the weight. We entertain them in church. We are busy jumping up and down and people start to jump the way we do. We are happy. You bring even a ball, a ball, a soccer ball in the church. You start to play with it. People are coming and they try to kick it and then they fall down. The whole church is happy. You church, let me be honest with you, you are fools. Where in the scripture have you seen Jesus bringing things and come and play in the church? Foolish church. Of today that even brings comedian when we are supposed to be investing that time preaching the word of God. The church has changed. Read the play. The thief does not come mm -hmm. except to steal, to steal, to kill, to kill, and to destroy. And the church of God is now in that state, is dying. Destruction is upon it. The word has been stolen. That is why we bring in comedians. The wives have been stolen. That is why every time what comes out of our mouth, blessing and prosperity, God wants you to be rich. For the past 10 years, you've been told that why is this God not making you rich? Probably he's powerless. Take that word upon the Lord. You don't wait upon the Lord in the tavern that you went to yesterday. Today you are in church, you are in Asha. You are there by the gate. Asha and people, you will smell like a dragon in your mouth. You smoke all the cigarettes yesterday. You smell like tavern. You smell like a sewage. Because the fear of the Lord is not in us anymore. You don't fear God anymore. We claim to love him. What did the book of Titus say? Is it Titus 1.16? That they profess to know me. We profess to know God. 
I'm standing like this, I'm making noise, professing to know him. But the question is, do I really know God? Don't, I have a family. Am I treating my family the way God is expecting me to treat it? I come and tell you every Sunday what you have to do. Am I doing what I'm telling you to do? Is my wife happy with me? What about my children? What about my siblings? What about my in-laws? My neighbors? Do they see Christ in me? For they did not even introduce themselves as Christians when they were in Antioch. People said about them, these are Christians. Why? They exhibited Christ. Read the scripture for us, verse number 16. They profess to know God. They profess to know God. But in works they deny Him. But the works that they do denies the same thing that they are claiming. Being abominable, being abominable, disobedient, disobedient, and disqualified for mm. every good work. <laughs> but we say that we love him. There's another scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter number 15, if I'm not mistaken. Read verse number 7. Saints, I want to build up a case here to show us that we need the word of God more than anything else. We need Jesus. What is the use of preaching good things when there's no Christ in your life? And it is the word of God that will show you the good things in the word of God. Uh -huh. Matthew 15 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Well did Isaiah, well prophesy, did Isaiah prophesy about you? About you. Saying, this is what Isaiah said. These people draw near to me. People like me, people like you are drawing near to Jesus. With their mouth. It is only our mouth and noise that you hear. And honor me with their lips. We are saying, oh Jesus, we love you. We honor you. We glorify you. But their heart is far from me. You're saying that you are glorifying God, you are doing this, but your mind is still on that girl you were with yesterday, what you are going to do after the church. Where is Christ in you? He says what? Their heart. That their heart is far from me. Because of God knows the heart. Your heart is far away from God. My heart is far away from God. Though I claim that I love him. Heart is far away from God. The heart is far away from God. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. They teach the commandments of men. This is what the church of Jesus Christ has become. We don't want the word. The Bible talks about they will bring stories to us that are tickling our ears instead of bringing us to a point or a place where we are right with God. Listen to what Joshua 1 8 says. This is the man after Moses departed. After the death of the servant of God. This is what Joshua, when he took after Moses, this is what he told his people. This book of the law. This book of the law shall not depart from your shall not depart from your mouth. But, but you shall meditate. You shall meditate in it, in it day, and night, day and night. That you may observe. That you may observe to do according to all. According to all some. That is uh, to all. To all. That is written. That is written in, in it. For then you will make. Your then way. you will make your way prosperous. Prosperous. And then you will. The prosperity that you are so much after. Is found in the word of God. You will make your ways prosperous, and you, then and you, you have will have good success. good success. That is why your offering, your giving, your sacrifices is not working for you. Because of remember, God is not after your money. He said, I do not want sacrifices. I do not want sacrifices. God wants us to obey Him. Your sacrifice without obedience means nothing to God. It means absolutely nothing to God. Being close to a pastor is not being close to God. 
or it's not equal to being close to God. You are close to a man. No wonder every time he appears, you bow down before him. That's foolishness. Thou shalt not bow down before any other man. They are saying that they will not bow before the Pope, but they are still bowing before their pastor. What's the difference? What is the difference? When he comes, he enters the place, you lay prostrate on the ground as if he is God. You are going to hell with him. You still hate your neighbor. You still cannot forgive that person at work who committed a mistake. The Bible says that forgive and you shall be forgiven. When you are at church, you are having this garment that you put on. When you are at work, you have another garment. You even have faces. When you enter that office, it's like the office is smelly. When you enter church, it's like you are entering heaven. You smile at church at work. You are something else. Come and tell that you are worthy, oh Lord, you are worthy, invincible God. If he's worthy, why don't you show it, even at work, where things are not going well for you? Now, you know, I'm, I'm just avoiding them. It's a lie. You hate them. It's a lie. You hate them. And if you do not forgive, the Bible says that you will not be forgiven. We need the word of God. We need the guidance of the word of God more than anything else. Where were we? In the Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8. Have you heard that? You need success. You need prosperity. It's found in the word of God. The thing is that we do not want the truth. Ezekiel 3, please. Read for me from verse number 1 to 3. Ezekiel chapter number 3. Read for me verse number 1 to 3. I said today I want us to write scriptures. Ezekiel chapter 3. Mm -hmm. From verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover he said to me. Moreover he said to me. Son of man. Son of man. Eat what you find. <laughs> eat this scroll. Eat what you find. Eat what you find. It does not matter what the Bible says. It does not matter what the scripture says. He says, eat what you find. Mm. Eat what? The, the scroll. The scroll. And go. And go. Speak to the house of Israel. You cannot go until you have eaten the scroll. Until the word has been consumed. Until you have, been, you have filled your belly with the word. You get into the church. Can I prophesy? Shut up and push the weight. The Lord is saying it's a lie. The Lord has never said anything to you. Continue, please. So I opened my mouth. I opened my mouth. And he caused me to eat that scroll. And he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, and this is what he said to me, son of man, son of man, feed your belly, my God, and fill your stomach, fill your stomach with this scroll, with this scroll that I give this Bible that I have given, the scriptures, the Holy Scriptures I have given you, fill yourself your stomach with them. So I ate, mm -hmm. and it was in my mouth like it was honey, in my mouth, in sweetness, like what, like honey, like honey, in sweetness, in sweetness. What is the next verse saying? Then he said to me, and then he said to me, Son of man, Son of man, go to the house of Israel. Now you can go. And speak with my words to them. Now you can go. The question is that do we have the way to give the people of God? Or do we choose scriptures that tells them about breakthroughs? Tells them about prosperity. Tells them that God wants them to be rich. Tells them that the Lord wants to bless them. And forget to tell them that they have to repent. He said, go to the children of Israel. Yeah. And speak to the house of Israel. Speak to the house of Israel. Uh-huh. Um, then he said to me, son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. Mm -hmm. For you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language mm -hmm. but to the house of Israel but to the house of Israel what is the next verse saying 
not too many people of unfamiliar speech uh -huh. and of hard uh, language uh -huh. whose words you cannot understand uh -huh. surely had i sent you to them uh, they would have listened to you uh -huh. people who are not willing to listen to the word of god the message has been given the scroll has been swallowed the word has been preached they don't want to listen Jeremiah 15 verse number 6 until we preach the word of truth until many are exposed to that truth their lives will not change Jeremiah Jeremiah 15 6 mm -hmm. you have forsaken me says the Lord mm -hmm. you have gone 16 what? 16 sorry 16 16.6 Both the great and the small shall die in this land. Mm -hmm. They shall not be buried. Wait a minute. That is? Jeremiah 16.6 6. No man. 15.16 6. Sorry for that. Your words were found. Listen to what the prophet is saying. Your words, words were, found. were found. And I ate them. And I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my the heart. The word of God was to him what a joy and the rejoicing of his heart. Which is what is supposed to be to us today. Uh -huh. For I am called by your name, O mm. Lord God of hosts. Mm. How many of us are willing to eat that word? Do we have the word for today? Do we speak the word that brings deliverance? That brings hope the people of god you remember what isaiah said in chapter number 50 verse number four telling us that god has given him the word preaching the word that the one who is learned what is happening to the church of today why do we deny them the word why do we give them what is not Isaiah, please, quickly, 50 verse number 4. We have to finish. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, uh -huh. that I should know how to speak. That I should know how to speak. The tongue of the learned, that is not to say that they were speaking by the wisdom of men. That is the wisdom of God. That is the wisdom of God. A word in season to him who is weary. A word in what? In, word season in season to him who is, who is weary. He awakens me morning uh -huh. by morning. By morning. He awakens my ear uh -huh. to hear. To hear. Are we still hearing from God? He's saying that the word that he gives is to them who are weary. People are so weary in the church. We are busy telling them about how God wants them to be blessed. Instead of telling them that do not be worried. Do not. Worry not. Tell them about God who's able to deliver them from their situation. Many people in the church are depressed and oppressed by Satan. And we're still telling them that God wants to bless you. It is not, I want to repeat this, it is not your giving that will deliver you. He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have an everlasting life. Jesus died. That is the ultimate sacrifice. You need Jesus in your life. You need Jesus Christ in your life. Saints, the reason why, believe you me please, you know, sometimes it is not to say that people are sinful. It is because of people have nothing to help themselves with. Let me show you something before I get to the scripture. Let us try the book of Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12. No, 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 not 12, sorry. Not 12 this time. Ephesians chapter number 6. Let's 
Listen to what the Bible says. Ephesians chapter number 6, start verse number 11. Put on the holy armor of God, uh -huh. that you may be able to stand against the... Listen to this. Against the words of the... Put Lord. what? The whole... The whole armor of God. Of God. That may be able uh -huh. to stand uh -huh. against the wiles uh -huh. of the devil. Today we are skipping verse number 12 that talks about the, our wrestling. Go to 13. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, uh -huh. that you may be able to withstand in the evil, evil day. day. Uh -huh. And having done, having all, done all to stand. To stand. stand therefore. Having gathered to your waist. Your waist. With truth. With what? Truth. Now, how will you be able to 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 get your weight with truth when the truth is not being preached? Because the Bible says, "Who wants all men to do what?" In Timothy, First Timothy, chapter two, verse number four, "Who wants? Who desire all men to be saved and to come to what? The knowledge of what? The truth." How will they come to the knowledge of the truth when the truth is not being preached? When there's entertainment in the church, when people are being tricked? Eh? When people, every time. Then when they fall, the church is happy. You are also falling in a pit. Because you have received nothing except clapping because your comedian pastor has been entertaining you. We need Jesus more than ever. We need Jesus. Uh -huh. You have to give your loins with what? With truth. Having put on the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness that you don't hear a lot about in the church. Uh -huh. And having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. No, not the gospel of peace. The gospel of prosperity. Not of peace. The gospel of prosperity. Uh huh. Above all. Above all. Taking the shield of faith. How will you have faith? How will you be able to take faith? When faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That you are not receiving. With which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. You see, the reason why we cannot quench those fairy darts is because we do not have faith. That simply means the truth was not told. Not enough truth was told unto us. We are given the glimpse of it and that is not enough. Uh -huh. And take the helmet of salvation, of salvation and the sword of the spirit. What is the sword of the spirit? Which is the word of God. How will you be able to take it when I did not even give it to you? But I'm coming here and said I hear God calling me, said that I have called you as a pastor. To do what? I've sent you to help them. How many people are receiving help from me? And don't make a mistake and say that I'm saying I'm the help, but that's not what I mean. That is what he told me. Meaning that you will be a conduit that I will use to reach them. For me to help them. I'm not the helper. I cannot help anybody. I need to help myself. The word of God. This is what we need. But now there comes the problem. In the church of Jesus Christ. How many of us are willing. To take the word raw as it is. Revelations 10.9. Revelations 10.9. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, Take and eat it. Take the book and eat the book. And it will make your stomach bitter. Ah, oh my God. Then it goes again. Now you take that book. You take that book. And now what is the book doing to you? It will make your stomach bitter. It will make your stomach bitter. But it will be as sweet as honey mm -hmm. in your mouth. You still remember in the book of Ezekiel, is it Ezekiel or Jeremiah, where he said that his word was like honey in his mouth. Mm -hmm. In the mouth, it's like honey. But when it's been digested, when it's been broken into pieces, it becomes bitter. That is when the word has been dissected in you. 
the truth now becomes bitter. That you are so much, Jesus, I need you in my life. Now when the truth comes out, it becomes bitter. You have to know how to dissect that word. Uh -huh. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand mm -hmm. and ate it. Yes. And it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. Yes. But when I had eaten it, mm -hmm. my stomach became bitter. This is what is happening. When you receive the word of God, it's a nice thing to receive. I'm born again. But now when the truth is being revealed, when the word of, when the word of God is being dissected into small pieces that you can the body can be it remember when you eat something when it comes into the stomach that is where all now the nutrients they go to all the places where they are required when the word of god now goes to a place where you are a fornicator and it starts speaking to you that becomes bitter to you you are a liar that nutrient goes to that place to do what to heal that place where you are suffering from lies and things like that it becomes bitter and now you can angry with god Because the word, when it's inside of you, it will correct you. When the church of God has got no word, we are having a problem. Remember what Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 15. He said to him, Study, study to show yourself. You will only be approved when you study the word just like you are studying that book of biology the time that you have uh, for that uh, what do you call this that magazine that you finish and you can even tell the story exactly you can narrate that story to anyone precisely that is what you need to do with the word of god Find that people when you go to sleep, that is then you take the Bible. And the end of the Bible, the Bible that is able that is supposed to help you, it hit you on the nose. Because you're sleeping. Now the Bible has become a sleeping tablet. 215. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. Uh -huh. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing, rightly what, rightly, rightly dividing, dividing the word, the word of truth. We need Jesus in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us to teach us the word. Mm -hmm. You remember Hebrews four twelve, telling us about the word of God. No wonder why we try not to teach the word of God. We try to entertain you. Saying the word of God is powerful. The Bible tells us that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. But instead of teaching you that I want you to come and buy an anointing oil from me and say that it will destroy all the yolks. Only to find that it's going to destroy all the all your eggs in that house because your children will be taking it and cook it, cook with it. Read, please. For the word of God is living and powerful, uh -huh. and sharper than any two-edged sword. This is the word of God for you. It's powerful. It, even to the division of soul and spirit, uh -huh. and of joints and marrow. And marrow, yes. And it's a discerner of the thoughts. It is the discerner. And intents of the heart. The discerner. It is the word of God that will correct you even when something in your heart that you have Conceit is wrong. The word will speak to you. The fear of the Lord is not there. It is because the word of God is not being taught as it is supposed to be taught. Now, how are the people of God suffering because of this pandemic? How are they suffering? Go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 12. I want to show you something. We're reading verse number 44 until verse number 45. 43, 44, 45. Listen carefully. When the word of God is not being availed to the people of God, what they become, it's so painful. You know, somebody will be saying, uh, I don't want to sin, which is good. 
I want to try to live for God, which is good. But you cannot do that by your own strength. By the strength of the flesh, no man shall prevail. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. We need the Spirit of God, that anointing to teach us. Listen to the sorrowful thing that happens to the people of God when we feed them us, not Jesus. Listen to what the Bible says. When an unclean spirit goes out of the of a man, this is now after we have been saying out by fire, out by fire. Now the spirit leaves. He goes through dry places. When he says he talks about the spirit, he walketh, he goes through dry places. Seeking rest. And that spirit, because it has been cast out of his place, seeks now what? Rest. In other words, the demonic spirit will not rest until they find rest. In other words, the demonic spirit, they go and try to find a place where they can dwell. They are always out there to find a place. Seeking rest and find none. And now they come to a point whereby ah, all these people, there's no place for us in them. Probably those are the ones that when they gave their life to Jesus, as the Bible talking about, come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the what they were given. The truth of God that is able to do what? To protect them. For the Bible talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And it talks about the helmet of salvation. It talks about faith. These are the ones probably who have received. There's no place. Or others, they are already demon possessed. They don't need to get there. Because somebody is resting in that person. Uh huh. Then he says, I will return to my house. I will return to my house. From which I came. Where I came from. And when he comes, and when the same spirit comes, he finds it empty. He finds it what? Empty. You hear the Bible is not saying that he finds it sinning. It talks about he finds it empty. Swept. Swept. And put in order. What? And put in order. My God, there's even order in this person's life. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than Wait himself. a minute, why is he going? What is the reason for him to go? Because he finds it empty. He finds it, it empty, swept, swept in order. and in order. He found it what? Empty, swept, and in order. Empty, swept, and in order. That simply means a tenant can come in. A place has been prepared. A tenant can occupy, for there is no occupant in this place. It's a clean place. But the problem is, it's empty. And then what happens? Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Mm -hmm. And they enter and dwell there. They enter and they dwell. And the last state of that man, the last state of that man, is worse than the first. It is worse than the first. So shall it also be with the, this wicked generation. Okay. This is the state of the church of today. We need Jesus in our lives more than ever. We are empty. Jesus said to Peter, "Feed my lamb." He said, "Eat the scroll." So that the scroll will start now and get into your stomach to correct what is wrong in your life. It's not by power of might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We need to repent. We need Jesus in our lives. He said, Amend your ways. The book of is it Jeremiah? Where he was saying to them, Amend your ways. Amend your ways.
Therefore now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God and the Lord will repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. Pastors, we need to repent. Teach the people of God the truth. We need to repent. If there's anybody who needs to hear about repentance, it's us. Repent and be baptized. How will they repent? How will they know about him if there's no preacher? Standing on the pulpit does not necessarily mean that you are a preacher. You might be a cheater. Cheating the people of God their own stuff. Cheating them the word. We need to repent. We need Jesus in our lives. Saints of God, those who the Bible says that this is what they like. Remember in the book of Jeremiah 531, where the, 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 the prophet is saying that the prophets prophesy lies and the priests live by their own power, and my people have love to have it so. Why do we have love to have it so? Why do we hate the truth? We have to come back to Jesus. He said in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 38, we need to repent. We need to repent. And Peter said, Repent, all of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit comes upon you, He is the teacher. Remember, Jesus said, He will bring back into remembrance everything that He taught us. The spirit of truth. That's what we need. We can, we can minister deliverance as much as we like. But when the people we are delivering by the power of God are empty. Expect to see them again on that prayer line. We need Jesus more than ever. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise, the honor and the glory. Let your word, my Father, my God, reach your people. Let them, Father God, be educated in the spirit. Grant them understanding, Lord, that all that they need is you. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Bless your people, Lord. Grant them, Father God, what they need to live. But mainly, Father, open them to the word. For the Bible declares that those who know their God, they shall do exploits. I am asking this morning in Jesus' name, bless their lives, change their lives. Teach them a true prosperity, Lord, that's found in your weight. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. And let them, Father God, never be found wanting when Jesus appears. And let righteousness be the order of the day and holiness in their lives. In Jesus Christ, my dear Father, help us as well to live right. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. God bless you and continue to devour the word of God until your stomach is full and bitter. But that same word, when it enters your mouth, there will be sweetness in it. And remember this, Jesus loves you. That is why he died for you. Till we meet again. Shalom. Stay ever blessed.